Hello and welcome to College 2 Consulting. In our last video I went over what market sizing was, I gave an introduction, I explained why it's asked, and I did an example. Today I'm going to go more in depth on that example and show you how market sizing is determined by age. So, let's say we get this question. How many cups of coffee are sold annually in the US? What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on my sheet of paper. I'm going to draw this table. I'm going to put in some fields that I know I'm going to need as well as I'm going to put in rows for the breakdown of my population. All right. Now this question says how many cups of coffee. So the first thing you need to do is you need to ask yourself is this an individual product or is it a household product? Individual product means a person buys it for only themselves such as a cup of coffee or maybe an apple, something like that. A household product is more of a, so of a product that is used by everyone in the house and not one, not one per person, like a couch or a bottle of dishwasher soap. So because I know this is an individual product, cups of coffee, I'm going to break this group into age. And very important, when you break down groups, make them mutually exclusive. Age is very easy to do because you are either one age or another age. There's no in-between. A second word of advice is that when you do break down your market sizing question into different groups of mutually exclusive people, only pick one category. If you do age and gender and hair color, it's just going to be too much to do. Just do one. It'll make your life much, much, much easier. So I'm going to say age. Next I'm going to put in is the total number of million people that that represents out of the total population, percentage of them to even drink coffee. Uh, so what that total is. Now the question I asked, how many cups of coffee? Not how many people drink coffee. So I need another variable in here. I need another factor to multiply by. And because it says how many cups of coffee, I need to know, okay, and let's assume that everyone's buying coffee. I need to know how many annual purchases of coffee are there for these people per year. And then I'm just going to give the total per year. Okay, So although this is just a market sizing question, I actually have a framework that I'm going to put in front of my interviewer and show them this is how I want to tackle the problem. I'm going to break the group down by age. I'm going to look at the total number of people that is, give a percentage of the people that even drink coffee. And then of those people, how many purchases they're making in a year to give me the total number of the cups of coffee sold annually in the U.S. Okay. I'm also going to make some overall assumptions. I'm going to say the U.S. population is about 320 million people, and I'm going to say it's evenly distributed. This means that there are the same number of two-year-olds as there are 78-year-olds. I, I want you to say that verbatim. I want you to draw out your market sizing table, put all the columns that you're going to need, and then say that the U.S. population is 320 million people, it's equally distributed, meaning they're the same number of two-year-olds as they're 78-year-olds. Say that to your interviewer, okay? You'll usually get a nod, but it's good to say that instead of just making the assumption in your head. Now, because I have this grouping by age, I'm going to say that the first one's 0 to 20, next to 21 to 40, 41 to 60, 60 plus, that's my total. Now, some other places teach you to break down the population use say say the population is 300 million people I don't like that I actually like to use 320 the reason is because I find my students can do math much more efficiently and they can do it faster when the number is round at the end so 320 equal distribution four different groups 320 divided by 4 gives me 80 million people per group and this zero at the end is going to make your math skills much easier or make them appear to be cleaner Okay, from the 0 to 20 group, I'm going to put in a percentage now. And this percentage is totally made up, but it's an example to show how you are deriving this information. So from 0 to 20, 80 million people, coffee's pretty bitter. I don't think young children really, really like it. So I'm going to say that only 10% of them are actually buying coffee. From the 21 to 40 year olds, I'm going to say that now they're young professionals, they're moving around a lot, maybe they needed to study, so I'm going to say this number jumps to 30. Okay, so what I'm doing again is there's no real data for these numbers, I'm just making stuff up, but I'm giving 
an explanation. So you can't just make up a number. You have to give the explanation. 41 to 6 year olds say they jump up a lot because now people have families and they need the caffeine to stay awake for their work. Let's say this doubles and jumps to 60. 60 plus, let's say this group takes a little bit of a haircut because they're older. They don't really need the caffeine as much anymore. I'm going to say it's 50. So if you see this, I'm not, I don't have any data to support any of these numbers. I'm making them up, but I'm giving an explanation. Okay? So now, from the 0 to 20 year olds, 80 million people, 10% of them, that gives me 8 million people. I'm going to also assume that a week has about 50, sorry, a year has 50 weeks. And I'm going to say that from the this group that there may be buying only one cup of coffee per week. So that gives me 50 cups of coffee and it gives me a total of 400. 8 times 5 is 40, add another 0, 400. 21 to 40, I have this 80 group, I'm saying 30% of them, that gives me 24. Now I'm going to say that of the 50, how, much, how many cups do they buy per week? Say this number is maybe 3, so 3 times 50 is 150. Now, how to do this math. So I know some of you out there, mental math is very daunting to you and it's not the best for me, but here's a little trick. First of all, when you do have to do mental math or you have to, you feel like you need to write down, do not write it on the sheet of paper. I repeat, do not write it on the sheet of paper. The reason is because it'll stick out and your interviewer will see it and it'll just be that little scar that will not make you look as clean. Instead, get another sheet of paper, write it on there, carry the one on that sheet of paper but don't let your interviewer see that sheet of paper, okay? Put this in front of their face so they only see this. Here's a little trick though. You can break the numbers 20 and four down into two numbers, 20 and four, and then you just add them back. So with four times 150, I know that 15 is like, you can think about it like a clock, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes. So I know that number is gonna be 600. 2 times 150 is 300, but I add an extra zero because it's actually 20 times 150. So 3,000 plus 600 gives me 3,600. From the 41 to 60, I say 80, uh, 80 million people and 60% of them are buying, are drinking coffee. So that number doubles from 24 to 48 because I went from 30 to 60. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to say that they're on average drinking a cup of coffee every weekday. So uh, that becomes 5 times 50 or 250. Now, I'm just going to do the same math rules that apply. I'm going to break the number down into 40 and 8. 8 times 250, think about it like quarters. I have 8 quarters now. If I have 8 quarters, that gives me 2, 2,000. Now, if I have 4 times 250, I know that's 1,000, but because it's actually 4D, I have to add a 0. So that's 10,000 plus 2,000 gives me 12,000. Last group, 80, 50% of the 80-year-olds in the 60-plus range. That means I have 40. Uh, I'm going to say that they don't really drink that much coffee anymore. I'm going to say they're probably only making 100 purchases of coffee. So 40 times uh, 1,000 gives me 4,000. Now, I'm going to add it. 400 plus 3,600 gives me 4,000. 4,000 plus 12,000 gives me 16. 16. Uh, plus the remaining four gives me 20,000. And what I want you to do is I want you to circle this number. Put it in their minds that you got to this number. So at the end of the day, your paper should look like this. A very clean example of how you got to market sizing by age, grouping, percentage, total, the number of cups. Make sure you answer that actual question and your final answer, which has been circled. For more videos, check out how we do market sizing by profile, by household, and even if you need to, revert back to what is market sizing. All right, thank you very much.